So this is going to be a bit of an experimental video for me. I know it's not a new thing, um, doing a spray duck bike video, but it is for me. And I'm really curious to see how it actually works. Um, I've reached out to them uh, just to ask how much they recommend, how many cans they recommend per layer uh, on the bike to redo it. And they've come back and suggested one can per layer for a frame and fork. So that's one can of primer to do an entire frame and a fork, one can of colour to do the same, and one can of top coat or lacquer, again, frame and fork. To me that sounds not a lot, but I'm willing to give it a go. So here we go, We've got one can of frame builders metal primer, 400 mil. Two cans of colour, uh, one can of pink, what pink is this, London Strawberry Hill, one can of London Bayswater, and then one final can of Spreader Bike, Frame Builders, Transparent Finish. I've also got all the original decals made for this bike um, from Gil at Retro Decals. So yeah, we're gonna, or I'm gonna experiment a little bit on this, do a bit of a blue and pink scheme rather than just the blue. Um, and we'll see how it goes. I am I am dubious, I am dubious, let's just say for the one, one can per layer, but apparently it goes on thick so you don't actually have to go over it much we shall soon see now this frame is not in the best condition so instead of spending hours and hours and hours sanding this frame back I am just going to take it to a powder coating shop to get it sandblasted and get rid of all this dirt and grime and rust and it's 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 solid but it's not nice and before I do get into any spraying I will sort of premise this video by saying I'm not adverse to spraying bikes I know I've powder coated stuff a lot of stuff in the past um, I just I am dubious about the long lasting quality that you can get from spray cans I would rather a bike be professionally sprayed and heated so it's all baked on. And those four cans cost me 45 British pounds as of, uh, you know, what are we in September 2020? So, yeah, 45 pounds for four cans. I hope they're good quality. Uh, obviously, it's going to let me experiment a little bit more with the colours, with the designs that I do rather than powder coating but it's already more expensive than I can get a powder coat. Give everything a wipe down first. Make sure there's no contaminants on it. There isn't too many instructions on the can other than shake it for three minutes. So that's what I do. Okay, extraction's on. It's gonna be a bit echoey, but this is also meant to be sprayed from 20 centimeters away minimum. So we're gonna give it a go. And uh, hopefully this can will go over two things. Okay, first impressions of that primer, 
it actually went over the frame and the floor pretty easily actually only one layer of course um, well technically but yeah it seems like it's got good coverage um, even going heavy on some areas there doesn't appear to be any runs which is what it promotes so we'll see what it's like when it's dry I'll give it a, a light sand down just to in case it picks up any dust or anything in this atmosphere um, and then go on to the colour it's very noisy but two days later the finish isn't actually too bad I've given it a light rub down uh, very light because it is only one coat ideally I'd want two coats on this uh, but one coat does cover it and give you a bit of protection but if you do rub it down too much you will just go straight through so uh, I guess now it's time for the colour So that pink has gone on really nice. Um, it's kind of a bit more fluoro, although the camera, I don't think it's picking it up. But it's a bit more fluoro than I expected. There is one downside to this pink paint. Um, it's very dry and very powdery, so it gets absolutely everywhere, absolutely everywhere. I think the white balance is completely off, but I don't know if you can see here where um, it's been able to fall, where, they, where the, the spray has been able to fall, but on every horizontal surface you've just got powder sitting on top, so the paint's gone down, anything left in the atmosphere has sort of dropped down as powder, so that is really, that's really rough now from a very smooth primer that went on with no problems whatsoever to this pink top coat which has left powder everywhere so it's a lot of cleaning and I haven't even sprayed these uh, chain stays this is all this is all dust this is all the dust off the spray as I've been going on so all of this has to be cleaned off before I can even lay the blue down um, so I'm going to spend now a good few minutes going over this entire frame again cleaning everything up trying to get rid of all of this dust um, and then I can lay down the blue And, like I say, <laughs> it's uh, very, very dusty. Even the blue, like it's gone everywhere. So that's something you've got to watch out for for this paint. But, it's not looking too bad, especially for my first attempt at um, fading. I know these two colours aren't exactly fade compatible, shall we say, it should be progressing more from a pink into a blue um, but yeah I think I like it um, I'm going to be doing some splatter on this as well before going on to the lacquer so I need to let this dry I'll let it dry overnight uh, tomorrow morning I'll try and put the decals on and then we will splatter it and then lacquer it
obviously the only thing left now after god i'm so happy with this after this splatter job and the decals is to put the frame builders transparent finish on um, again recommended this was just one coat when i asked although it does say on the can that if you're doing the top coat one coat equals a satin finish two coats or more equals a gloss finish so i probably should have got two or more but i was only recommended one uh, when i asked Well, I can give you an instant reaction to this sprayed up bike uh, clear coat. One, it's made the uh, paint underneath the... Okay, it's not sprayed up bike paint, it's just another generic spray paint. Uh, it's made that run. But it's also started affecting the decals as well. Um, especially the Tang Tunge one at the bottom. It's really started making it shrivel. The Marin one up above is really shriveling. The Palisades one on the top tube, the head tube seems to be off okay. Marion on the down tube is lifting slightly. Um, so yeah, it doesn't like it. Hmm. Yeah, it's really, it's really messed up that decal. Okay, well, the good news is the decal survived. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened there. They had a bit of reaction to the clear coat. Apparently, that's a thing. Um, spray bike have told me that most of the time you have to test your decals first to see if they react but um, as you saw those ones reacted and then flattened back out um, not in every place there are there is this place just here on the eye the decal has lifted slightly so I might have to get some I don't know uh, varnish or something and just like pin that down um, but yeah, I'm I'm glad they I'm glad they sorted themselves out. So this whole video was meant to be a a sort of honest opinion of using this sprayed up bike. Um, obviously, I'm coming from a opinion of spray paint. It it looks cool. Um, you can do great things with it, and yes, you can get great results with it. Um, which are tough but it does cost a fair bit to get that so I was intrigued when Sprayed Up Bike told me that I only needed one can per layer don't get me wrong I absolutely love how this has turned out um, I love doing it um, the pink to the blue fade looks awesome um, and I love how it's broken up a little bit with the splatter that I've put on so yeah I mean I love doing this, I love using the spray paint, I just think it needs a lot more than one layer per can. Of course what I, of course what I meant to say there was one can per layer, um, I don't think it, I don't think, I think you should use more than one can per layer. So just for a quick sort of review per layer, the primer um, I thought that went on really well. I love the no drip sort of claim and it did come through as no drip. But I would honestly use two cans at least for the primer layer. One can did cover frame and forks um, to a, good, a decent coverage. But um, if you're going to do any sanding back of it just to double check that you've got all the areas flat. You are just going to take it straight back to metal if your frame has been taken back to metal like this um, so yeah two cans at least i'd say for frame and fork now top coat um, again i was recommended just one can for the color um, which i think might be doable uh, yeah i think if you were just doing a solid color one can would be good. Um, it's going to be thin again, but it's also, this is the problem, a very, very dry layer. 
Um, it created that horrible dust that went absolutely everywhere. So you've got to really make sure you've got good uh, ventilation or use a mask, a proper mask. Um, so it filters out all those particles, but it's going to go everywhere in your workshop, absolutely everywhere. Um, and sweeping it up doesn't work, you've got to like mop it all up. So, that also goes over your frame. It goes, like if you're spraying up top, is that in the shot? No, it's not in the top. But if you're spraying the top tube, it drops onto the down tube and everything below it. Um, and embeds into any wet paint. So if you were to do this first and then go over the top again, you then have powder embedded in the down tube, which has happened to the seat stay bridge um, and some other parts like the cantilever hanging on the rear. It's it's very it's very rough on there now. It's very powdery. Where um, I went over other areas and then the powder from the overspray fell into the wet paint and it's stuck there. So I would have to sand it all back and go over it again. Now the splatter, the splatter wasn't sprayed at bike, that was just some other brand I had knocking around. Um, but we're gonna go on to the top coat. And obviously I was recommended one can. It's very, that's, that's just gonna be a stretch. And as the can suggested when I got it, it's gonna be a, um, satin finish so if you aim for that gloss finish you need at least two cans I would also say you need at least two cans to give a proper bit of protection um, like on the down tube here I, I don't know if I just I stopped because I panicked about the decals because I, I had a little bit left in the can but this doesn't feel like it's protected here it's got a little bit of a, a satin sheen to it but not as much it's not as smooth as the rest of it so this is a rough finish here um also the uh what was it called the clear coat it went on a little thicker in places like um obviously the the primer and the top coat felt quite controlled coming out um the clear coat it seemed to sometimes almost want to run i mean it, it did try and run in places but it seemed to self level it itself out um so there are no drips on the frame but it definitely needed more than one can definitely um because it's it's just going to chip off um the paint is so thin that i think stone chips are going to be such a uh a, such a worry for this this beautiful design now I love this design but I think stone chips are going to be a massive worry in fact when I actually put the seat post in you can see parts of it here have flaked off already um, now that has been obviously the frame was sandblasted I sanded up areas and you know kept everything clean when I was doing it so I tried to make the preparations as good as possible but yeah, it's flaked off. I don't know if that's down to bare metal or if that's just the top coat, the colour that's flaked off, but it has. So I'm going to have to touch up those areas um, straight away. And, and I don't know if this is going to come across, but these are the problem areas where the, the paint is extremely rough, like extremely rough and textured, where all the dry powder overspray from the um, colour fell. It's made it really rough. So I guess to finalise, um, to put an end to this video, this little review, um, while I did enjoy it and I absolutely love the result, like I, yeah, I can't get, I don't know if it looks as good on camera as it does in person, but I love getting, I loved getting creative with this paint job. Um, the fade, the splatter, and the spray cans really helped me do that. Um, obviously with powder coating, I can't do that, so plus one to spray cans. But my powder coat finish is going to be a heck of a lot more durable than this finish right here. Um, £40 worth of paint or £40 worth of powder coat 
the powder coat is going to win every time in terms of durability but the 40 pounds of is the paint the spray paint is going to win in creativity to get a frame done like this you know by a professional with a spray gun and all that sort of jazz which is going to be a lot more durable it's going to be baked you're going to be looking at sort of you know 200 300 400 pounds so it is a good cheap alternative but i think there are improvements to be made on the recommendations for a sprayed up bike i would say at least two cans of primer if you are going to be doing this especially from bare metal um probably two cans for the top coat as well because um, I used two cans one pink and one blue and it gave a good coverage and I think probably three if not four cans of clear to really give it that protection that it needs rather than just the one they recommend so that's going to stretch the price for it's like ten pounds a can um, what did I say there two plus two plus three is seven seventy pounds plus five pounds of delivery so I'd say you're looking at least to budget seventy five pounds for this and the decals themselves were 35 pounds so um, yeah it's it's probably going to be over 100 pounds for a, a, a good solid job like this so next time I do this and I will do it again um, I'm going to buy a lot more paint <sighs> yeah so there it is that's my little review I I know there are a lot of people that use the sprayed up bike um, around there and I don't know how much of a a feel you've got for using sprayed up by from those videos but I hope this has sort of expanded it a bit um, and it gives you a bit of a clearer idea of what to look for in it um, I'm no expert obviously this is my first time using it um, but yeah from my point of view these are my thoughts so hope you've enjoyed the video um, hope it's helpful um, subscribe if you want to see more especially the build of this video this build of this video the build of this bike um, and um, yeah thumbs up thumbs down subscribe share bloody blah, blah, blah and i'll see you in the uh, next video thanks for watching